So, uh, next slide, please. Um, <coughs> as you see, we, uh, we are uh, treating in Germany the most uh, difficult allergic skin and autoimmune disorders. We have here some samples of atopic eczema on the left, of psoriasis in the middle, on discoid glucose erythematosus, autoimmune disease on the right side. And uh, when uh, we started uh, uh, integrative treatment of these disorders in 1986 in Germany, we learned already a few years later that all these diseases have an environmental background. Next slide. And um, starting with allergy, where researchers uh, know since 1970, since the 70s, that to induce an allergy, you need an allergen, like the nuts here, you need a microbial uh, factor, and obligatory, you need a toxic factor, an environmental factor, a chemical factor, to induce an allergy in animal experiments. This was the starting point for our thoughts, 1986. Could we find these elements in our patients we saw before on the slide? Could we find all these three elements in allergic patients? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. Next slide, please. For instance, the environmental factor, which is dramatically important for the very, very strong increase of allergies in the last uh, 50 years, the, the effect of this factor is starting already during pregnancy. The fetus is exposed to the toxic burden of the mother, which, who is transferring a very significant amount of organotoxin and heavy metals to the fetus, transplacentary. Besides, the breast milk includes the same elements, heavy metals or organochlor uh, stuff, organochlorine uh, stuff, uh, like pesticides, like um, paints, uh, like uh, wood preservatives and so on, organochlorines. And uh, as you may see in this sample of mother milk, we have significantly increased amounts of hexachlorpenzone, very high amounts of DDT metabolites, polychlorinated biphenyls, and so on. The child of his mother has been uh, <coughs> receiving only breast milk the first six months of life. And he was in a very, very difficult clinical condition. Next slide when coming to us. And the mother was desperate, saying, I don't understand the world. The pediatrician told me breast milk is the best food for babies. And we know this. But the breast milk should be free of such residues, as we saw before. And on the heavy metals, we also find in this breast milk, because the mother had 14 amalgam fillings. And already, already during pregnancy, the transfer of mercury of tin, as Professor <coughs> Gross in Germany and Rush in Germany showed in aborted fetuses, the concentration of these elements in the brain of the, of the baby, in the kidneys and in the uh, liver is directly proportional, is directly related to the number of amalgam fillings of the mother. A very, very important thing we have to think about in the future. So this guy, this small guy, was looking at that by just receiving breast milk. Of course, we need a special integrative approach here. And we succeed, we see in four to five weeks, next slide, to get another baby. Okay? But we have to take care of these important provoking factors and delete and eliminate them step by step from the body. Also, the intestinal flora is dramatically changed in these babies. And of course, in all allergic patients, we have a dramatic sensitivity against foods, different foods. So we have to uh, identify these allergens and eliminate them and offer the, these babies. We discuss in the afternoon uh, uh, hypoallergenic personalized diets. Next slide. Well, when discussing the classic environmental disorder like 
fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, or multiple clinical sensitivities. We have this um, paper in Germany where we presented the main biomonitoring steps to identify this stuff, but also the sensitization, immunosensitization and neural sensitization of the body against the same stuff. This was, as a matter of fact, the deal we had with the German issue since 1995, when they asked us to accept and pay for environmental patients in our clinic, they asked us to bring three lines of evidence. The first one is the proof for the total burden, for the increased total burden of toxicants, like organochlorines, like pesticides, and like heavy metals. Next slide. And we bring these proofs in every patient after metal mobilization tests, after investigation for, for uh, organic compounds, as you see in this fat biopsy sample. The fat biopsy sample is the most relevant uh, proof we can bring for such, for this burden, because uh, the body is concentrating in the fatty tissue all these toxic compounds. And it, what you see at the bottom of these columns, the red and the bl blue uh, small columns, are the concentrations in blood. And what you see with yellow are the same stuff concentration in the fatty tissue. The problem is that we don't have this uh, concentration only in the uh, escape ring we have on our bell, but we have the high concentration in the brain because the brain, the um, phospholipids of the brain are also accumulating the whole misery, the same misery. And that's why we have so many Alzheimer's and we have so many Parkinson's as we see afterwards in this afternoon. Next slide. Of course, we also had to prove that the same patients are sensitized immunologically and neurologically against the same stuff, and we need appropriate immunological tests for cellular immunity, and also that these people cannot detoxify. So we have to show for the insurances the so-called genetic polymorphism for the detoxifying systems. Like this, they've been ready to cover the costs for the patients coming to our clinic. So it's a quite complicated way to prove that these people are not stimulants. As the Dr. Chicolela said, c'est pas possible d'avoir 5 millions de simulateurs en France, n'est-ce pas? Merci beaucoup pour cette intervention. Alors, so um, it's, it's impossible, of course. The same story we have in Germany. And these elements, as you may see in this table, the heavy metals like chromium, gold, mercury, cadmium, and so on, are also very, very important treatments for autoimmune disorders, autoimmunity. You can see here the correlation with serious autoimmune disorders like lupus, like scleroderma, sclerodermy, like uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis, glomerulonephritis, and all these things. Very, very important <coughs> findings that the medical community should know every day when they speak about autoimmune diseases. Next slide. And uh, the same, uh, here is an example, for instance, in uh, uh, scleroderma, sclerodermy, where uh, there are very serious scientific proof that all the stuff you can see on this table is maybe incriminated in the pathogenesis, etiopathogenesis of scleroderma. So the environmental compound, environmental line, is extremely important to be investigated in all these disorders. Next slide. Uh, yes, um, the same. Uh, the same problem we have in Parkinson. There are beautiful works documenting the participation of systemic pesticides, as you may see here, as well as the heavy metals. Uh, we, we investigate this in our patients and we have very good results when eliminating heavy metals by Parkinson patients. Next slide. And here, the same the heavy metals, here is the uh, concentration of iron in the substanza nigra of the brain in these people, very important aspect, so we have to think about the etiopathogenic role of such environmental factors. Next. The same for Alzheimer. Everybody knows the importance of aluminium in Alzheimer, but also the importance of mercury 
like these studies we have in Germany, Dr. Mutter, one of my colleagues in Germany, uh, uh, is showing and documenting since years and years. Next. Uh, finally, we discuss today, shortly, uh, Monsieur Chicovella, notre député, uh, is on, um, they spoke about the participation of these elements in cancer. Well, this is one of our most important papers, 2006, where we document the presence of high levels, very, very high levels of toxic metals in the tumor tissue, a very high accumulation, one order of two orders of magnitude against healthy control tissue of heavy metals, next slide, like uh, iron, like mercury, like nickel, like chromium, or even zinc. Zinc, a very healthy element, is a very important element for the growth of malignant tumors. Zinc is participating uh, in the main enzymes like DNA polymerase, timidin kinase, or carbohydrates, which are ensuring a redosis state in the tumor cells and their multiplication. So we have to be very careful with such elements and not give them to any uh, cancer patients. Next slide. Of course, the chlororganic compounds, the pesticides are also found in the tumor tissue. So we have a very, very important indication that in all these disorders discussed before, the environmental uh, aspect is crucial. Thank you very much for your attention.